Welcome to Tech Bytes, feeding your tech hunger fast. I'm Patrick Norton, and this is Motorola's Moto G. It's been called the best budget smartphone out there. Seriously, it's a fantastic deal. An affordable sack of smartphone, awesome, under 200 bucks for a quad-core CPU, 4.5-inch Gorilla Glass screen, 16 gigs of RAM, and best of all, excellent build quality. Most low-cost phones feel cheap. The Moto G doesn't feel cheap, it doesn't feel swank or built like a tank either, though Erica Griffin does have an amazing video where she dunks the Moto G for 30 minutes, dunks as in underwater. Don't do that. This phone is only water repellent according to Motorola, not waterproof. But you get the idea. Motorola didn't cheap out on it. The fit looks good. It feels nice in the hand. At 143 grams light with a stock cover on it, it really does feel good in the hand. It tapers from 6 millimeter at the ends to 11.6 millimeters at the center. The curve feels good in the M logo on the back. It's a little indent that your index finger falls right into. That 4.5 inch screen, 720p resolution equals 329 pixels per inch, and it looks sharp. I only had two problems with the Moto G when it came out. There wasn't enough storage and there's no 4G LTE. I wanted more speed. Last week, Motorola shipped the fix for those two problems. The Moto G 4G LTE, which is the one I'm holding, brings 4G speeds and a micro SD card slot to the Moto G platform. The phone I bought direct from Motorola.com, probably part of the first batch of US spec 4G LTE phones that shipped. I immediately swapped the SIM out of my wrecked iPhone 4S and fired up a speed test and discovered that I'd probably need to change plans on AT&T to get 4G LTE speeds. Once that was done, the Moto G delivered more than double the download speed of the same phone in 3G mode. 10 megabits per second up from 4 megabits per second, which actually sounds awful. Your mileage is going to vary depending on your carrier and where you are and what you're connected to and how many phones are around you. Case in point, we swapped in the T-Mobile SIM from Michael's phone and this was delivering 19 megabits down, 12 megabits up. That's a huge jump in speed from 10 megabits down and 1 megabit up on AT&T. So, just be aware, your mileage is going to vary in terms of performance. The phone worked fine as a portable Wi-Fi hotspot. The 802.11bgn Wi-Fi, not the best I've seen on a smartphone. It could be more sensitive, though early rumors online are that the current operating system, KitKat 4.4. something has created some Wi-Fi issues with several models of Android phones, and I'm hoping that gets fixed in a future update. Bluetooth 4.0, I love that it has the ability to play just about any audio format. The Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 1.2GHz quad-core CPU feels fast. The quad-core is great with multiprocessing, switching between maps, games, calls, network analysis apps, smooth. Something other low-cost smartphones I've used did not do so well. Now, Motorola claims 24 hours of battery life, but the 2070 milliamp hour battery is hardly huge. If all you use the phone for is talking, a little web browsing, it'll last 12 to 18 hours easy. Put it into straight video playback on the plane, maybe some serious gaming on Wi-Fi, the battery life's gonna drop into the eight hour range. Several Android users I know were delighted by how sharp the screen was. At 329 pixels per inch, it's higher res than the iPhone 5S, but the color seems slightly muted by comparison. Motorola's choice to use Corning Gorilla Glass is a soothing feature for me, given how many screens I've cracked in the past few years. It, well, was soothing until my two-year-old knocked the phone out of my hand and the screen cracked on its very first trip to a sidewalk. Note to self, replace the screen and put an outer box on it before the wee berserker gets another shot at it. Now, so far, I'm a week in, I'm delighted with it, but the phone has one major flaw, which I'll tell you about right after I tell you about the dollarshaveclub.com slash techzilla deal. For a few bucks a month, Dollar Shave Club ships amazing razors and other bathroom stuff right to your door. I'm using their blades. They are just as good at the big shave companies at a fraction of the price. Shave yourself time, shave yourself money, dollarshaveclub.com slash techzilla. Now, did I mention a flaw? There are a couple of minor ones. The lack of support for 64 gigabyte micro SD cards is irritating, though being able to drop in a 32 gig card is way better than being stuck with the 8 or 16 gigabytes max on the original Moto G phones, especially given that over 2 gigabytes is sucked down by the operating system. Also, there's no NFC. If you're into tapping your phone on tags, change settings, or to turn things on and off, this is not the phone for you. But frankly, those are minor complaints. The only real disappointment I have with the Moto G 4G LTE is the camera. Like the Moto G before, at the rear camera on the Moto G 4G LTE seems to be the place where they cut the most costs. 5 megapixels at 4x3, a mere 3.8 megapixels at 6x9 if I'm reading the specs right. Yes, it has slow motion, video, burst mode, auto HDR, panorama, but 720p video capture at 30 frames per second is hardly amazing. Neither is the static image quality. Acceptable? Barely. Good as an iPhone 5S? Not even close. Good as a Moto X? Not really. Good as an iPhone 4S? Not in my opinion. It's not so much about the modest megapixelage as it is the mediocre color and compression and weak low light performance. 
and well, actually the focus. Focus on the Moto G can be an issue if you're, say, taking a picture in a room with lots of stuff going on, especially as the light gets darker. Close-up portrait's not too bad. Just be careful with the poke at the screen style of tripping the digital shutter. Photos that looked okay on the Moto, not so hot on a full-size 1080p monitor. Look at the cat's fur in this picture. It looks like a Matisse painting. There's no sign of individual bits of fur. Also, by the way, never use the 4X digital zoom. Just blows up pixels, ruins image quality. I hate digital zoom on any camera. I did find the onboard FM radio on the Moto G pretty spiffy especially in the car. It only works with a headset or a patch cable plugged into it for an antenna. The GPS performance is solid and according to the specs it even works with GLONASS satellites. Cool. All right, I might be down on the camera, but the rest of the Moto G is pretty amazing for the $220 list price. 4G LTE, excellent quad-core CPU performance, a sharp look, and if not exactly concrete proof, four and a half inch screen, and the ability to add 33 gigabytes of storage via a micro SD card. Okay, I really wish there was support for 64 gig cards, and I really wish the camera was better, but hey, I've got a great unlocked phone and no two-year contract or mad monthly payment. Well done, Motorola. Now let's see the Moto G 4G LTE with badass camera, and you can use that name, seriously. Hey, please subscribe, techzilla.com or youtube.com slash techzilla, tweet at techzilla, and if you wanna learn how to fix your headphones with the broken cable, the ones you've been looking at but don't use anymore, check out this episode of Die Trying. I'm Patrick Norton, thanks for watching this episode of Techzilla Bytes.